I'm Pepper Dave, and this is Welcome to the Apocalypse. We're going through some turbulent times right now. People are getting a little nutty from the lockdown, and the media seems to be trying to spark that powder keg. In this episode, I'm going to tell you five simple rules I use to survive civil unrest. Before I get into surviving civil unrest, I have a little something to get off my chest. It seems that the powers that be have lumped my channel, Welcome to the Apocalypse, into some kind of alt-right propaganda list. Over the past few weeks, it seems my reach has been a little bit suppressed. Welcome to the Apocalypse is and always has been open to anyone. As long as you are into guns, free speech, titties, bacon, F Troop reruns, mixed martial arts, artwork of Bob Ross, Miss Pac-Man, and Fago Soda Pop. I will be respectful of your opinions. I may secretly think you're a moron, but I will be respectful. Do you ever get the feeling you're being f***ed with or manipulated? That's because you are being f***ed with and manipulated by the great American propaganda machine. Whenever we saw stories or read books about a totalitarian or authoritarian government, it was always a government-controlled media dictating every aspect of our private lives. The reality of what we have today is far worse. We have a media-controlled government government and a media controlled populace that dictates the direction of our country. The news media no longer respects real news. Hell no. They report what they think should happen and they're all dumber than a sack of hammers. As much as the anchors on the nightly news like to pretend like they're saddened by tragedy, we all know if it bleeds, it leads. The media is hoping for bloodshed. As long as they get their ratings, their clicks, and their money. They report on what they want to happen. What they want to happen is sometimes the worst for us. It seems right now we're being herded towards some civil unrest. Old Prepper Dave. Prepper Dave is here to make sure you survive that civil unrest. We're gonna make sure you survive that media orchestrated chaos. Damn Prepper Dave, you're turning into a Just go with it. Let's go up some snowflakes. I spit a little right there. Pussy. Bull it, son, I'm a predator. I'm a great white shark and you can't swim. You get in the water and I'll feast. This ain't no fucking Kenny Rogers song, but I do understand that sometimes you gotta fight to be a man. At the same time, I'm no man's puppet. You can't pull my strings and make me dance. But if you want to take the bait and be on the intellectual level of a catfish, go on ahead. The goal of this channel is and always has been to help you thrive and survive. As much as I like my survival tools and my firearms, a lion's share of survival Surviving civil unrest comes down to common sense. And common sense dictates that we keep ourselves out of situations that could go sideways. And that brings me to rule number one. In tense times, avoid urban areas whenever possible. But I want to go downtown to the farmer's market. But I want to go downtown to the farmer's market. Hell no. Have you been paying attention lately? The last thing you want to do when a storm is brewing is go downtown. You don't want to end up in an area where you or your vehicle will be trapped if the shit kicks off. You ever been on a city freeway during rush hour? Now imagine that with people throwing bricks, shooting, and setting fires. F*** that farmer's market. Go to the corner store and pick you up some green giant, frozen broccoli. Rule number two, nothing good ever happens in a crowd. I know I've said that one before. But I want to go downtown and show my support for or opposition to I understand we all have principles and we all believe in causes, but principles and causes won't feed your family if you get yourself killed. Killed. But it's a peaceful protest. Am I imagining things or those peaceful protests ended in a lot of destruction and death lately? Any organized protest or rally is only as peaceful as the least peaceful person in attendance. Rule number three. Learn to recognize tension. If you have to be in an area where the political climate is hot and the people are rising up, that's when you want to make sure your OODA loop is firing on all cylinders. You remember the OODA loop? Observe, orient, decide, and act. The OODA loop is a constant decision-making cycle that an individual who is trained in situational awareness uses to stay in control of their faculties during an emergency. Be constantly observing your surroundings. You're not observing for an action, but you're looking for an pending action that could lead to violence. You may be looking for an argument between two individuals within that crowd that may lead to a violent action. And when you see something that is deserving of your focus, you need to orient yourself, focus on your options, whether it be fight or flight. Once you make a decision, you need to act. 
or carry out a decision that you think is the best course of action. But remember, this is called the OODA loop. Once you take that action, the loop continues and you adapt as your environment dictates. Rule number four, choose your battles wisely. When the shit gets thick and the tensions have boiled over, it's time to turn on the war machine, right? Hell no. Once you engage, you're all in. I know once I release the hounds, there ain't no whistle to call them off. These dogs are gonna get their bone. That's why priority number one is to collect anyone you may be with and egress to safer grounds. You think old Prepper Dave doesn't want to jump in a melee and give some commie rider a headbutt to the orbital? Bull I dream about that the way a fat kid dreams about ice cream. I dream about that the way a white chick dreams about pumpkin spice frappuccinos. I dream about that the way Boogaloo boys dream about a white claw. But discretion is the better part of valor. Rule number five, draw your line in the sand. Here's the one old Bubba has been waiting for. When you have to draw your line in the sand and jump into defensive mode. Hell yeah, I knew I'd get mine. There will come a point where there is no more room for egress. Whether it is at your block, at your street, or at your doorstep. Sooner or later, you will reach that point where you have to jump into defensive mode. When this happens, you may be alone or you may be with a crew. If you have like-minded neighbors, you might want to discuss these items ahead of time. You might want to get some training in and become familiar with. Basically defensive tactics but be careful when you do this the government likes to throw a little term around that term is called militia that reminds me I got a couple messages where people said I look like I belong to a militia I was told I look like a member of meal team six I also got told I look like a member of seal team Twix one guy even said I look like a US gravy seal I get it I'm a little husky in the bottom right hand corner of my left you will see a little red box that says subscribe or die if you don't click that box you won't die but if you don't subscribe you might have to start yourself a youtube channel and folks might send they might send mean messages saying that you resemble some kind of fat special forces operator words hurt actions have consequences if you want to look like a badass and support this show at the same time head on down to prepperdavewtta.com and pick yourself up a welcome to the apocalypse t-shirt you can get the harbor freight cross machetes or you can get the faithful f around find out t-shirt people will know you are not one to be trifled with so get one today be sure to go to my channel watch some of the older videos throw some comments some likes interact throw some dislikes i don't give a shit. until valhalla